How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at mercury barometers and manometers. So our objectives will be to describe how barometers and manometers work and how to calculate pressure by their readings. All right, so mercury barometer. It's basically a glass tube filled with mercury and inverted. So we got this glass tube and then we inverted it so you can see it's open down here and there's a pool of mercury down here as well. So the gap at the top is a vacuum. There is no air or gas up there. You know, a vacuum is a weird thing to kind of think of because you always think, well, there's air. No, there is nothing in that, uh, that gap at the top. So that tells us that the pressure from the column of mercury that's pushing down because gravity's pulling on it has to be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on the pool of mercury down there. They're in equilibrium. The pressures are equal. So the higher up the column goes, the higher the atmospheric pressure is. So we can see that the uh, barometer on the right is at a greater pressure than the barometer on the left. So this happens more often with cool dry air. Cool dry air, the uh, pressure tends to be higher because the air is more dense. And uh, on the left, the lower the column, the lower the atmospheric pressure is, this tends to be for more warm, and moist air because it's less dense. So there's less pressure with warm, moist air. So again, we talked about how the pressure of the mercury column equals the pressure of the atmospheric uh, pressure, all the gas pushing down on it. Now the math for it, the pressure of the mercury column is equal to the density times the height of the column times the acceleration due to gravity, right? Uh, density of substance times the height of the column times gravity. The units on these tend to be this, right? The density is usually in kilograms per cubic meter, the height is in meter, and gravity is meters per second squared if we're using our SI units. So when we do that in the math and things cancel out, we end up with kilograms over meter second squared, which is the same thing as one Pascal. Now the density of mercury, this is this huge number, but we usually don't need to actually do this DHG math, right? Uh, so why is that? All right, well, let's take a look here. Um, if we did the math, that you, you can get all that, but the reason we don't need to usually use the density, height, and gravity thing is because we know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So if we know the height of the column, we can just convert that to whatever other unit we need it to be. We don't need to do this crazy math and get Pascals and then go from there. For example, if a mercury barometer has a height of 700 millimeters, what is the pressure in kilopascals? Well, we know that, hey, 700 millimeters of mercury, I know this conversion factor, I know that for every uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, we have 101.325 kilopascals. So when I do that math, I end up with 93.3 kilopascals. So we don't have to actually use density and height and gravity most of the time. All right, manometers. All right, so here we got a chamber that's filled with gas. We have a glass tube, kind of like a barometer. And in this example, it, the top is open. So we can figure out the pressure of this gas using the difference in the height of this column, as well as the pressure of the atmosphere that's pushing down on it because it's open. Um, this I put this little star here so that you know this is where like the equal sign is. The pressure on the left side of this bend has to equal the pressure on the right side of this bend always. All right. Yep. So pressure on the left has to equal pressure on the right. So where can pressure be coming from? Uh, it can be coming from the atmosphere if it's open. So here we have an open top. So the pressure from the atmosphere is pushing down on this column. We also have the pressure of the gas pushing in the opposite direction right there. And then we also have the height difference between the each side of the bend. So we know that the pressure from that could be GDH, but we probably won't actually use gravity density height. Because um, oftentimes these kind of scenarios we're talking about, we're using liquid uh, mercury. So we know that 100 millimeters of difference is 100 millimeter of mercury pressure that we can uh, then use, avoid using the pressure equals GDH. So 
In this example, the open ended. So we have pressure pushing down on this column. We have the height difference from that column also pushing down on this side. And then we have the pressure of the gas pushing down. So in this open ended manometer, the pressure of the gas has to equal the pressure of the column as well as the pressure of the atmosphere added together. So pressure exerted by the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere and the height of the column of liquid. So example problem, what is the pressure of the gas if the pressure of the atmosphere is 725 torr and the height difference in the column is 65 millimeters of mercury? So we know that this difference is 65 millimeters. From here to here, we know that we have 725 torr or millimeters of mercury pressure pushing down here, and then we have the pressure of the gas. So the pressure of the gas has to equal the pressure of the column which is 65 uh, millimeters of mercury. And we need the pressure of the atmosphere, 725. So when we do that math, we end up with 790 torr, or millimeters of mercury, which is the pressure of the gas. All right, so here's another uh, open-ended manometer example that is slightly different, because if you take a look, it is on the gas side of things that the column is higher. So we have a slightly different scenario because now we know, hey, at this bend, the pressure has to be equal on either side. So the starting point is different. The, in this case, the left side, the pressure of the gas and the pressure of the column added together has to equal the atmospheric pressure pushing down on that side. So if we're trying to get the pressure of the gas, we need to account for that. So an example, um, well, I already said that. What is the pressure of the gas if the atmospheric pressure is 725 torr and the height difference of the column is 15 millimeters? So we know that we got 15 millimeters on the gas side of things, so it's 15 millimeters plus whatever the gas is has to equal 725 torr on the right side. So again, if I look at this equation, I gotta rearrange things. If I'm trying to get the pressure of the gas, it's gonna be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus the pressure from the column. So now I could just kind of plug and chuck. I go, all right, well, the pressure of the atmosphere was 725 torr, and I gotta subtract the 15 millimeters or the 15 torr from the height of the column, and we end up with 710 torr as the pressure of the gas. Oh yeah. All right, so a closed-ended manometer example. So you can see here it is closed, so this up here is just a vacuum. There is nothing up there, uh, which changes our scenario a little bit. Still, the pressure on the left has to equal the pressure on the right, but now the pressure on the right is not from the atmosphere. It's just from the height difference in the column. So, yeah, since one end's closed to the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure isn't a factor. So the pressure of the gas is just going to be equal to the pressure from the height of the column. So what is the pressure of the gas in this one? Well, it's, you know, 725 millimeters of mercury, right? If they want a different unit, you just got to convert it. All right, so to summarize, describe how barometers and manometers work and how to calculate pressure by their readings. Hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.